Uh, it is Wednesday again, and this is the Wednesday Night Mouse Party. I am Dan Foss, and <clears throat> so far we've got Gizzard Gary. How's it going, Gizzard? Yeah, it's going so far. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, oh, no problem. Thanks for being here. Oh, oh wait, I remembered. I remember, I remember. Uh, let me get the right one. The banner. I got the banner. So at the bottom of the screen, there is an email and a link that will get you somewhere. You can send in comments, suggestions, or pictures within reason. Uh, and if you watch this in replay, leave a comment. Uh, whatever we talk about, agree with, disagree with, think I left out, let me know. I read all the comments and they are always appreciated. All righty. Let's take a quick look. See who was out there so far tonight. Woods was out there a little earlier. Said he'll be asleep, but rooting for us. Uh, Sergeant Joe Smith. Baron SVG. Vulcan Rumble. And Mr. Bob Dabalina. Ozzy Orsborn. I think that's everybody so far. Good evening, good evening. Oh. How's it going, G-Webs? Good evening. Good evening. I watched uh, Gentleman Bronco. Yeah, I did too. I liked it. It was all right. It's kind of um, uh, low budget Wes Anderson movie. It's did did you end up watching it, Kizzer? Did you see it at all? No, I haven't. I mean, I wouldn't drop everything and watch it or nothing, but it was definitely uh, unique, right? Well, yeah, it's like it's... I have such a busy schedule. <laughs> <laughs> The it's a the director directed um also Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre. I've seen both those. Well that makes a lot of sense then actually. Is that the same person who's gonna be doing the, the gun cube uh, origin movie? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, he's he's holding out for Michael Bay. He wants lots of explosions. Oh no 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 no. I'm I'm holding out for for M Night Shyamalan. Oh, you want a twist? No, not at all. He's awful. You'll be a thriller. <laughs> no, I think that director's dead. <laughs> by the way, Just FYI. Still a great album. It, oh, no, no, it's a great album. But the guy, the guy who directed the movie, I think he's gone. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan Rumble's asking a question out there: scrambled eggs with butter or olive oil? Butter. I say butter. Butter. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm gonna try olive oil and see what happens. Yeah. Never tried it. Not what? a fan of butter because it's got so much water; it makes the eggs runny. So I'm liking the idea of oil. Well, he, here's a question for you guys. Do you guys make grilled cheese with butter or do you use mayonnaise? Neither. I've done both. Neither. Butter. I, I, use, I, I used to do butter, but it's easier to get the mayonnaise on. It is. Yeah, I heard that trick once I tried it. It's pretty good. Yeah. It tastes a little bit different because it's not as uh, salty because from out from the butter. But it's still pretty good. So, are you putting the mayonnaise on the outside or the inside? Well, you put it. You put it on the outside, like you know, like you would slather the both sides of the uh, bread with butter, and then you'd fry it. It's got enough fat content; it fries up real nice. Really? Yep. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, thank you. I'll stick with butter. Okay, you're missing out, man. You are. I really right. are. I'm okay with that. It's okay. It's okay. I don't often yeah. agree with Night Strike, but I'm going to have to. 
Well, I'll, I'll I'll take a win as a win. Okay. There you go. <laughs> if I if I grill a ham and cheese, then I'll put mayonnaise on the inside. But yeah, sometimes. obviously, but still. What kind of yeah, cheese? Not on the outside. Cheddar. Swiss is good now. Monster, yeah, good I, Swiss. I like ham and Swiss. Monster cheese is good too. Ham and Swiss on rye is good. <clears throat> oh yeah. Colby Jack is good. Marbled rye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Colby Jack too. Oh, Colby Jack's real good. I'll use Colby Jack sometimes. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry turning this. I'm sorry for turning this into sandwich chat. No, that's all right. I like a good sandwich. Me too. You know, one of one of these days we need to do a bracket on the best sandwich. Mmm. That'd be toughy. As a sandwich bracket. We need to make that happen. Uh, Baron said Pam. I don't use Pam. I often. have tried that spraying Pam on the outside. It only Pam? really it only really works if you use the Pam that's butter flavored. Well, Pam can leave a sticky residue. That's why I don't like to use Pam. But I've never tried the Benny and June method yet. I've always wanted to try that. I have never watched Benny and June. They made uh, grilled cheese sandwiches using an iron on an ironing board. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, it's no, like the... What, 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 what kind of iron did they use? Just an electric iron? or was Yeah, it electric iron. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one of the steam ones, right? Because you don't mm-hmm. want to steam your sandwich. You don't, you want to... No, it wasn't the steam. Yeah. Kind of sounds like the... Uh, I can't remember it was years ago the hack hack uh where people were doing grilled cheese in the toaster i've done them in a george foreman grill so by that works it works yeah we had a george foreman grill for a while but it dries out the chicken yeah. if, if you cook chicken I, I got a newer one lately and uh i've done steak on it that's pretty oh, yeah steak. it does it does steak at really well Single guy's best friend is George Foreman Grill. Trust yeah. me. The trick oh, is but... with steak is don't overcook it. Yeah. If you got if you even if you have the family size George Foreman Grill, you can cook for the whole family too. Yep. So Mr. Bob Dabalina said put butter. I have butter frozen waffles on both sides and cook them on a griddle. Hmm. That's a good idea. I mean, you're really all you're really doing is just reheat them. So. Uh, uh, I got sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's all right. Uh, Microsoft on my Windows now has AI. As co-pilot, yeah. and it sits down in the corner of your screen. I was asking it questions, and like uh, for you know, it's just kind of random nonsense questions. I asked it, "Why is a duck?" And it gave me "Why a duck," which is from a Marx Brothers movie, and. Asked it if six were nine, and then it explained the Jimi Hendrix to me. Then I said, seven does not equal two. And it gave me some mathematical formula why seven does not equal two. Then I asked it, how do I stop artificial intelligence from here? Let me share this. Its response to the world. How do I stop artificial intelligence from ruling over mankind? And it said, I am here to assist and provide information, but I don't have the ability to rule or control. My design is centered around user privacy and ethical guidelines to ensure I am helpful and safe AI. If you have any concerns about AI, discussing them with experts in technology ethics could provide more insight. But... 
after that, it tells me it might be time to move on to a new topic. You, you know, I, I hear one of the Google, the Google programmers, I think he goes by the name of John Connor would like to tell you that if you're <laughs> listening to this, you are the resistance. <laughs> yeah, it sounds exactly what uh, a reeling IA would say. Yeah, it does. I just like the, <laughs> the warning. It might be time to move on to a new topic. <laughs> I like when Sergeant Joe Smith says your AI sounds like a politician. Yeah, I, I'll probably play with it more because you can do um, pictures, and I've, uh, I think I just asked it to draw me a monster, and it did a pretty good job. Uh, kind of a gave me some kind of frog monster thing. But I was gonna mess with it some more but i am not i don't know i still am leery of ai well did you upgrade to windows 11 nope i've been holding off all right i'm, I'm still on windows 10 on most of my laptops and my desktop i have one laptop i upgraded to windows 11 and i dislike windows 11 i'm not saying don't use it i just don't like it. they're I trying dislike. to make they're trying to make it look too much like, you know, Mac OS to try and get people from Mac to switch over. Uh, and, you know, that's nice, but you you you, tur you turn away all the users of Windows before Windows 11 by doing well, so. Uh, I like Windows 7 better than Windows 10. I liked Windows 7 better than Windows 10. The reason I stopped using Windows 7 is because there's no more updates. Yeah. Security fixes. So any security fix or, or security flaw that's out there right now, they're not patching it. So it's time to move on. I don't, I don't get, um, on my laptop, it'll, you know, it bugs me every now and again, uh, about upgrading to 11. You know, it says I, all, you know, Ooh. my laptop can, can handle it. Do you want to, I'm like, no, I don't want to. Ooh, my I desktop be using Windows 8. Um, no, 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 no. My desktop it tells me that it does not meet requirements, but my my laptop is a Ryzen five, and I don't. It's just an idea pad. I mean, it's not. It's yeah. I, it was. I got just enough so I could stream. That's that's yeah. all this laptop oh. does is stream. The, when I re not... when ahead. I rebuilt the desktop. I went with a, um, it's a Ryzen 7, and... That's what I got. It's it's more powerful than this laptop is, but for some reason, it does not meet the requirements. I don't, I don't want to understand why, but I don't really care why. <clears throat> yeah, well, I've got my, my one laptop I got, upgraded to windows 11 without me telling it to and i'm i was very unhappy about that it's because i left i left i, I forgot to turn a setting off on windows saying let me do let me check out through the updates before i update i just had them i saw I, and, watched, I saw a video not too long ago somebody talking about that where they're pretty much going to start forcing people into 11 yeah and yeah that's coming but Honestly, if I'm forced to use 11, I may as well just switch over to Linux. Honestly, because I'm not going to use Windows 11. Mm. So I'm one laptop, and I only use that laptop to do 3D printing and CNC. So I don't, I don't really care about that laptop. But all my other devices, I'd rather have Linux or Windows 10 on. Uh, Baron said, "Frog." Oh. There we go. Frog monster sounds familiar somehow. Hmm. I, I wonder why. When you do Linux, you can just run Windows software, or do you have to run all Linux software or something? It depends on how you set your Linux, your Linux build up. There is a Linux version where it'll natively run some Windows programs. Okay. But really, the best thing to do, in, in all honesty, if you're going to run Linux, is to just make sure you have enough cores, enough RAM, and just virtualize Windows. That's the best way to do it. 
So if you want to run some Windows apps, you just run it through that virtual machine. And with, with Linux and with uh, some virtual machines now, you can even do the hardware. So if you want a video game, you can run the video card straight through that VM too. It's called the uh, hardware pass-through. I'm mostly worried about video games. I know, I know. But it applies to video editing too. Uh, Sergeant Joe Smith says he still uses Windows 7. Uh, Vulcan Luck. Rumble. I'm using an AMD version of Windows 8. Yeah, Baron says you can use Wine, and yeah, Wine does work for most things, but it doesn't work for everything. It's been ages since I messed with Linux. <clears throat> I had an old computer. I had an old version of Ubuntu loaded on years ago. Which version? Oh, gosh, I don't remember. I had a lot of fun playing with that. I was really amazed when I got it all to work finally. It's like, this is so cool. Because I had yeah. a machine that was, I believe, is running XP when XP was discontinued. And it's like, yeah, it's on its last legs. I don't want to try to upgrade Windows. So it's like, let's just play with it. I'd always been wanting to play with that. So I gave it a, gave it a shot. And it right. worked. Uh, Mr. Bob Dabalina, you can undo Windows 11 upgrade settings within 30 days of changeover. Yeah, it's been 30 days already. So, And I'm not going to try and reinstall Windows on that machine because, no. It's not and worth it. Ozzy, Ozzy yeah. runs Chromebook through a mobile hotspot. If you want to try out Linux, you can make a bootable Linux drive and just yeah, try it could, out that way. Yeah, you can run live CD on a USB drive, yeah. I'm kind of at the place where I just want uh, attractive GUI and ease. I'm lazy. Well, Windows 11 is for you then. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, you, I say that jokingly and sarcastic. Actually, I prefer Sonoma 14, but that's okay. Oh, uh, let's take a look at. This week's poll, which is linked at the top of the chat. If you haven't voted in the poll, you can head over there and vote. Hold on. Let me get my 10 accounts ready. <laughs> let me get the right page going. He's there going we go. To sway the results. I am not. And the question this week was, which are you most likely to do? Slide a back van, a black van with a spoiler around the corner. Jump an orange charger over a creek. Park a Trans Am in a moving semi. Drive a red Ferrari around Hawaii or drive around in a green van with a Great Dane. And it, ah, somewhat even across the board here. Uh, drive around in a green van is 26%. Jump an orange charger was 22%. Slide a black van was 21%. And park, oop, oh, red Ferrari is 19 and park a Trans Am was 12 percent i was gonna say it's got a lot more votes than that now or a few more anyway uh let me uh let me refresh there oh so oh yeah that changed the results a little bit the charger is ahead now and looking at the comments there Oh, oop, let me. I always have to remember to do newest first, otherwise, some comments don't always show up. So, Caucasian Sasquatch said, Green Van, obviously. I, I already have a great Dane. <laughs> Chris Lang, I guess I'm kind of rental desk. I didn't think about that until he said that. Um, that the Trans Am could have been taken as Smoking the Bandit, but it was Knight Rider, was what I was thinking. Oh, I thought Smokey and the Bandit tell us. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, know. Well, because that's what Knight Rider would do is he would drive up into it. Um, they'd be cruising down the highway and they drive up into the semi as they're going down the road. You know, with Mr. Feeney stuck in the dra dashboard. Uh, uh, Mike said, give me 50 pounds of gold chain and call me BA. <laughs> Karen Woodson's 
okay, park a Trans Am, and um, and I'm in a moving semi trailer. My mind went instantly to Knight Rider. I so want a kit car of my own, and Dave Hasselhoff was a bonus. Uh, to a chef and barbecue. Do I hear Dixie? Mm, just my, just my. And Night Strike asked, "Hasn't G Webs done all?" All these already when he was an 80s action star. In the, but I did it in the Birds Reynolds type of Trans Am, not the Knight Rider kind. I didn't know that was a Trans Am. I guess I didn't know what kind of car that was. Mm, mm. Which one, the Knight Rider? Yeah, Knight Rider. I mean, I oh. liked the Rider, but I never paid attention to what car it was, I guess. Uh, my stepdad had. He didn't have the Trans Am, but he had a Firebird, the same same generation. They look cool. His his was only a V6. It was kind of gutless. <laughs> well, the Firebird, Firebird, yeah. That would be um, Rockford Files, right? Did he have, was his a Firebird or Camaro? No, it wasn't a Camaro. He didn't have uh, birds and stuff all over it, though. No. He just had a regular car. Yeah. I almost put him in there, but I didn't know if enough people would have got that. Doing J turns in a, I guess, would have been Firebird. Uh, Tim Allen said Duke Boys for the win. Vanessa Kitty said with a lot of Scooby Stacks. And Sergeant Joe Smith, tough choice between vans. I love solving mysteries, but not much into the stoner crowd. Now racing around and shooting out of vehicle out of a van sounds exciting. It does. It does. Uh, and then he was asking whether I meant Knight Rider or Smokey and the Bandit. I, I, I hear I hear on good authority G Webbs may or may not have done that out in the desert. What? With your van. What? Shot out the window of his van. A shot out of a van? I've been shooting out of vans my whole life. Yeah. I've had friends that had to hunt out of vehicles, so I've been shooting out of vans a long, 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 long time. See, you got prior experience. But with the A team, you're not allowed to hit nothing. It's like being a stormtrooper. <laughs> That's true. Oh, wow. That would be awful not allowed to hit anything. Yeah, but the Mini 14s are still cool with the chrome. Yeah, the plan is still in stock. Together. The plan wasn't to kill nobody, it was just to make a bunch of people jump. So the plan came together. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Thank you to everybody who voted and commented on the poll. Uh Ozzy's asking was Shaggy's van green or powder blue? Yeah, I call it more like teal. Right. Yeah, it was teal and then had kind of large green stripes. Yeah. Blobby stripes. I mean, it's right in the middle, but I'd say it leans green than blue. Yeah. But I'm remembering. I don't I have one in front of me or nothing. Mm -hmm. I was have, not... have like a pop up, you know, like those things you put in your windshield for like the sun. I have this thing that's I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's a, it turns into a van. It's uh, it just pops up. So it, maybe it's like a kid's play thing. I don't know what it's for. It's probably for playing in. Huh? I think it. I think the color just kind of depends on. It's what blue and at. green. It's blue and green. <laughs> yeah, because uh, when I was orange. looking, when I was looking earlier, they looked more greenish with the green, and now I'm looking, they look more. It's blue with green. Technically, yeah. that was Fred's van, I believe. That's what I always thought. But... Well, who else's van would it be? I would call it teal with green. Like the out, the top and bottom color is the color, right? And the green is the accent. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, this one looks a little. Eh, stop changing. I think it just kind of depends on which one you're looking at and what color it is. Is that a 
what do they call that? See that thing right there? The second one from the left? That's what I have. I don't know what that is. This thing. one? Yeah. I don't know what it is. I bought it one time because it looked cool. Oh, a little to... pop-up tent thing? Yeah. I tried to put my dog in there. He don't like it, so I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I had I had a pink one in the shape of a castle for my daughter. My son had a um, Star Wars one that fit over fit over the bed. So oh, it was cool. Like getting that, like I don't know why they don't do that as an X fight X Wing. That would be amazing. Oh like yeah. X Wing. Or a TIE Fighter. Both would be cool. I have a question. Yes. When did Ozzy change the spelling of his name? What happened? It says oh. Osborne now up <laughs> there in the chat. <laughs> Maybe he gave up. <laughs> Maybe he gave up. <laughs> I just noticed that. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe he finally removed the R. It's just a different account. It's an imposter. No, because um, he's got a wrench, so it's real Aussie. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, the Saints out there living the van life. Uh, Vulcan Rumble oh. brings up it was called the Green Machine. That's true. Wait, Those no, mystery the machine. machine. Yeah, the Green Machine is something else. That was a toy. Oh, that was the the three wheel. Had. Yeah, we had a mystery machine. Called the green machine. Mystery machine. Yeah. And Ozzy said in the movie the gang broke up. Shaggy had the van. I didn't see the movie. Oh really? But Fred's always driving it. Ever, you know, he's always driven yeah. it. Right? He was a better. Like, he's a better driver. Am I crazy, or is there one where they have a different vehicle? I don't know. Maybe there was a crossover with that buggy, but I'm remembering something where somebody else was driving something sometime. But anyway, and then Fred had the band though. Uh, the, Ozzy, Ozzy said he edited out that pesky R. Ah, the writer said it. So now I have to remember that it's Osborne, not Orsborne. He needs to put an E on the end of it so <laughs> match up. Can't well, technically, the recording artist is pronounced <clears throat> Osborne. Hello. Oh, Hello? It looks like your looks like your show's about to start on the old yep. time zone or whatever. Back when you people had your regular clocks. See, my thing stayed the same. Your stuff changed. I think he got a phone call. No, no, because that was my alarms for this show. It's just that my alarms don't change. You guys all changed around me. So I'm an hour earlier, and everything is an hour earlier than it used to be. Or no, an hour Web, than it used to be. G Web refuses to change. I can't he help flexed. it. My phones are just like this. My phones he are just set for nine. They're set for 11 30, except that your show used to start at midnight. Now it starts at 11. All right, all right. Stop flexing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing here. You all moved around me. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that at all. Yeah, my car clock um, adjusted itself. Well, my clock can adjust. The phone can adjust, but the alarms don't. So when the show used to be at 11, midnight, I had these alarms to let me know the show was coming. Uh, I used to have two because if I'd be asleep or whatever, I need both phones going off. Saint said shag wagon. Oh, shit. Do you know what tomorrow is? Mm. Think about it. Think about it. Pi day. Uh, yep. Yep. Pie bracket tonight? You got a slice no. of pie, pie bracket in here? No, I can't do can't do a bracket. Um, as you know, my bracket is has a twelve jewel movement, and one of the ruby jewels is cracked, so it stops the movement. So I have to get it fixed. So if I set one up, we can't do it. You just can't crank the knob and go right over that movement or whatever. No, it it well, it, it needs to be properly I, fixed. I I think I think we have to have a discussion here. We 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 have to have this discussion on air. Why are you anti bracket? 
I'm not. I did. No, no, no. What, no. A week you're, ago, you're, we did a you're bracket. bracketist. You're bracketist. No. Yes. I had a special. We did a special bracket. Even you know, it showed dedicated just to doing a bracket. A bracket doesn't need to be special. It just needs to be done. Oh, it does. He Each bracket. Bracket abstinence. Each bracket is precious in itself. No, it's not. Uh, Miss Bob Davalina said St. Louis Day, 314. <clears throat> no, it's also Pi Day. Is that the area code over there? I don't know. <laughs> and then the next day is the Ides of March. Well, see, watch Sergeant Joe Smith says bracket. We got a bracket coming up this weekend. It'd be the NCAA tournament bracket coming up. Eh, it's only for people like basketball. Yeah, the WSU, the Washington State Cougars, uh, are ranked 22, I think 22. 20 or 22, somewhere around there. So I might watch, might watch it this year. Oh my God! He might actually watch sports. Where I come from, WSU is Wichita State University. I know, yeah, shocker, this shocker. That. <laughs> That's right. Anytime I look up WSU, I have to remember to put in Cougars. Otherwise, I get a bunch of shockers stuff. <laughs> uh, Bob Dobelina said yes. Three fourteen area code. I went back through and I was, I was looking at a bunch of old videos on the computer. Oh, no. You should not and, do that. Uh, went back and saw a bunch of videos from, uh, you know, my wife's different birthdays and got to see what wonderful gifts I gave her over the years. Um, such as the die sublimation printer, <laughs> uh, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Uh, cookware. How, how how are you not divorced? Well, the vacuum cleaner she actually asked for. The printer, yeah, you know, I kind of I mentioned that like last week, the dye sublimation printer. And apparently, I did not remember that I gave it to her as a gift. And I would almost guarantee she, that's one she did not ask for. <laughs> I'm not sure why I gave her that, but. It was uh, the printer and a pack of uh, photo paper to print with. Oh, well, yeah, you got to give her the photo paper, too. Otherwise, yeah. you know, it just doesn't work. I don't know. <laughs> One of the years, I took my son to the store, and I told him, you can get your mom whatever you want uh, for her birthday, and, and I'll sure. buy it. <laughs> and he bought, he got her... Uh, a one liter Mountain Dew and a bottle of mouthwash. <laughs> nice. But there, there was one time we were at the store and it, like just a grocery store. And I said, Hey, you want to get something for mom? You can get whatever you want. And he <laughs> bought her a can of beef consomme. <laughs> Is that like running all around the store looking for something or like just grabbing the first thing that he's standing next to? Uh, he's always kind of struggled with if you give him infinite options, he can't decide. So you need to narrow his options down, you know, to, you know, choose between these three things and then he's OK. But if you say anything in the world, then he'll kind of freeze mm -hmm. and can't decide. I think that was a the consomme was a panic buy. Oh, hey, we'll get this. <laughs> wow. Was that something that he's like, I like when mom makes this, or is it just no. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what even is that? Uh kind of like beef broth. It's like it's like bouillon. Okay. So it essentially has like a narrow 
band of uses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know there's something that I actually want to talk about, and I do not have a clue what it was. Uh, Unrelated or something else? Law related? Unrelated? I I don't remember. I know. Well, I know there was. Oh, um, is is a baron related? Hold on. Thunder in the Prairie. No. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention was uh, the hearing on Mag the Mag Band in Washington in the state court was heard on Monday and the judge said he needs two weeks to finalize his decision. So um, in another week and a half or so, hopefully we'll have a decision Um, hearing that it probably will be a positive outcome, but it will immediately be uh, taken to the state Supreme court. But so we we might have a good decision here coming up. Hopefully, no Baron, not 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 a loaded gun. I've I, I've had a pawn shop owner uh, point a uh, a broken gun at me and say fix it, but that's about it. Well, he he was telling me that uh, he was at the pawn shop and the owner was trying to put a sig in a holster that was not made for a sig. And Baron told him, hey, it's not a good idea. Those can go off. And he jammed her in there anyways. Ooh. I don't believe it went off, but X out of ones out there is asking why was I not notified of this meeting? I see how it is. Well, that's because you didn't click the bell. Well, I didn't want to bother you. I thought you were busy. But I'm happy to have you here now. Yeah. Baron always gets the exciting stuff. He said he still has the the right number of holes. Well, as as long as he he still has the right number of holes, that's right. His ex Adam says the bell has been clicked. Mm. Well, then, for whom the bell holes? YouTube is just trying to keep us apart. Mm. And the saint wants to know was it a P320? Most Sig? likely it was. Yeah, I'm good. I, I know um, Yankee's been having problems with YouTube pulling his videos. Well, it's Yankee. Can, can you, can, you know, it's got something he's doing wrong. Oh, it's like every video he uploads, it it either gets pulled or he gets some kind of warning on it. But that's about like Instagram. I was just going to say my knife post because of dangerous, dangerous content because I have pocket knives in an industry show. Oh no! Oh no! Whatever shall we do? Maybe they just they think you're a rough customer. No, it's because Gary, Gary is such a renegade and a rogue. It was literally the factory rep in three of those cases showing me the knife. That just makes it better. It's stupid is what it is. Well, of course, but still. I appealed it, but of course they're going to take their sweet time. Well, they'll probably tell you no. Mm, my luck's been pretty good on appeals. The thing is, my account will look good, and I won't pay any attention to it. Then the next thing I know, I look again, and I've got four more hits. They just go back on old stuff every once in a while. It's like, let's get him for this one, this one, this one, and this one. Mm-hmm. And it's not just me. From what I understand, it's a lot of people. Mm. 
I under I kind of sort of understood when it was guns, but knives. Come on. Remember, they're banned in other countries. Yeah, well, I don't live in those other countries. I know. It's like, what's next? If I put cat pictures on there, they're going to say, well, that cat still got his claws. He's dangerous. <laughs> yes, they, they will. They most certainly will. And he's got teeth. Look. Teeth. And, they're say and, then, and then they'll say, you need to put that cat on a treadmill. He looks too fat. My cat's not fat. He's festively plump. <laughs> he's 13 and a half pounds. That only works when it's the when it's a festive time. Uh, yeah, Ozzy, I have a three twenty that's never given me ounce of issues. People, I mean, it's never given me issues either. People like to say that. Uh, and Volca Rumble, Volca or Vulcan Rumble, uh, was asked, was talking to you, G Web says, I was not aware I need a gun permit to purchase a magazine in Massachusetts. Yeah, it's not so much a question. We were listening to uh, Cape Gun Works today and they were talking about that. I think, though, what he was saying is that's going to be the case, or maybe it is the case already. Yeah. Oh, I'm not aware of it. But essentially, they have to have a concealed carry permit if they want to purchase a magazine in Massachusetts. Wow. Who knows that? They don't have to fill out a form or anything, but they have to have that proof of whatever. California is similar. They have to have some sort of a pr proof that they're able to purchase in order to get ammo. Like a proof that they're able to purchase a gun in order to buy ammo. I guess somehow if they're scared that if someone goes in and just buys ammo, could you imagine if they don't already have a gun? Oh, the well, horror. I've heard the argument about it before. The people that are for uh, like background checks for ammo is, you know, it's like, well, we need to know who's buying the ammo. Like, no, you don't. No. Just, just for the record, I'm being sarcastic when I say that. Oh, the horror. Because it's ridiculous that you have to have a permit to even buy ammunition. Uh, uh, Vulcan Rumble said there is no Sig Sauer P320. It's now called the M17 8M18. Only if you have the manual safety. You say I beg to differ. You can still buy a P320. Plenty of them. I like my 320 without the manual safety. Oh, uh, yeah, on the SIG website, it looks like it's they've got P320 M17. Yep, they got a couple of them. Mm. Yeah. They like seven different versions of the 320. Uh -huh. And that's not including the M17 and 18. Yeah, so it does look like they're still using 320 in the, and, and using M18 and M17. <clears throat> yeah, because those are special models of the 320. Uh, I don't know. It, it ain't got no hammer. I'm not really interested. Oh, so you're a 250 guy. I almost bought a SIG one time. Uh, a 45, went one in 45. I don't remember what the model was. And then I was going to buy it from Cabela's. And they were, they were a problem. So I yelled at everybody and told them to keep it. Look, I, I I said you said you're a hammer guy, and as, as I said, you know you're a P you're a Sig P two fifty guy because you know 
that's the 320 where it was when it was only hammer fire. Yeah, the uh I think Yeah, the my my G20 is the only striker fire I own. They've got a couple striker fire. Is the uh, 380 EZ that's an internal hammer, so it looks like a striker fired, but it's hammer fired. Yeah, I think that's the only one. I mean, I, I don't, they're not for me, but I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with them existing. And my uh, my Glock twenty, I love that. I love that Glock twenty. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Uh, Ozzy said he has to show a Foyd card to buy ammo. Yeah. Bummer. Oh, really? That's lame. Oh, wait, no, I think I remember that. Like, if you're not an Illinois resident, you can't buy ammo in Illinois because you don't have a Foyd. Really? Yeah, because you, you can't get a Foyd if you don't live in Illinois, I don't think. So that essentially means you can't buy ammo outside of Illinois. Or if you live outside of Illinois. I, I thought I heard that if you had a concealed carry permit from another state, that would count. Well, that might be the case, yeah. Or maybe it's up to the store. I don't know. Yeah, it might be up to the store, too. I spend as little time as I have to in Illinois. I had to drive through it last year. but Oh, no. Yep, and I bought gas right before the state line and didn't buy gas again until after I got out of the state. And I did not stop once in the state of Illinois. Oh, yeah, I was just trying to look real quick, see if, if Google could tell me anything about that, the Illinois thing, but uh, don't bother. Yeah. Google's not reliable. Yeah, it's communist. Oh, yeah, here we go. IllinoisCarry.com. Uh, yeah, I guess I can show everybody what I'm looking at. If, if you must. I must. Handgun ammunition purchased by non-resident question. Because uh, it would it see it would seem weird, like if they don't have any provisions for any anyone visiting or anyone in like the shooting sports, like either Olympic or otherwise. Well, uh, I think I got suckered in here. It looks like you got suckered. Yep. Yeah, because the uh, uh, on here said, yes, it's perfectly legal, but you go in. I don't know where that comment is. And this is from 2015, so I don't know if it has changed. Oh. Oh, well. Uh, Mr. Bob Dabalina said, I live in Missouri and have been to ranges in Illinois. Uh, had to show a Missouri ID to be able to shoot there. My son lives in Illinois. He had to have a FOID card to shoot. That makes it even stupider. <laughs> you, if you're not from the state, you can. it's easier than if you're from the state. 
Because uh, I believe, you know, it looks like he's saying he just had to show his ID that he's not from Illinois to be able to shoot at that range. But if you're actually from Illinois, then you need a Foyd card. I, I don't know if that's right, Sergeant Joe Smith. Might be true in the wet counties. It's not true in the dry counties. And there's plenty of them in Arkansas. I think he meant to say an inconvenience store. Where is that the ATF store? Is that was that Nevada? There's one in uh, Kingman, Arizona, or Arizona. That's the town where you go from 40 north to Vegas. So there's two towns in Arizona. Well, three towns in Arizona on 40: Winslow, Flagstaff, and Kingman. So Kingman's the one that's the closest one to Nevada. Oh, you forgot Winslow. Didn't I say Winslow? Did you? Yeah. I thought okay. I did. Such a fine sight to see. Although yeah, it's the uh, third most dangerous state or city in the state right now. So don't if you go, If you go through Winslow, you got to go downtown and see the statue. You just have to. I saw a, a headline in the local newspaper that Washington State is number one in burglaries. Yay! Yay, Washington. Hmm. There's no deterrent. Yeah. Interesting. Go, Washington. Woo. Well, I didn't read the article, so. Somebody probably stole it. <laughs> stole the article. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They stole it before you could read it, Foss. That's some dedication. Uh, X Adam One said, getting a little bored with guns or just too broke to keep up. Either way, do you get that way? And how long does this illness last? Uh, I do get the broke part. Uh, I don't know if I if I've reached I've probably not been bored with guns but Nope, sorry Uh oh G-Web, speak more of Chinese to us, please Oh, do you guys get tired of guns? I don't know so much tired of guns as not finding anything on the market right now that just interests me to the point I really want to go get it. You know, that kind of runs in cycles. The gun industry sometimes moves kind of slowly. Yeah, very slow. I want uh, the Taurus TH-10. <laughs> Good luck finding I... one. Good luck. Well, yeah, there aren't any to find. And, well, you know, since there's a 10 round limit, then I can't have the magazines. And I was looking to see magazines for sale. So if there's like a Freedom Week, then I would snatch up a bunch of magazines, but you can't even find magazines for them. Did you talk to the rep at Shot Show at Taurus? Yeah. Did they say anything about it? No. But if they did have to say something about it, they probably would say, don't hold your breath. Yeah, because I think if I got the opportunity, 
I would probably put the so I'm saving up for a lever gun, but I would put that on hold and get the TH10 if if it were possible. I have a TH9, which I really like. It's a good budget gun. And I'm really interested. When I, I got excited when I saw they came out with the 45 because right. I knew that gave them the bigger frame to do a 10. And the influencers have put out reviews on the 10, but there's nobody. I haven't been able to find them for sale anywhere. They're all out of stock. Well, I know they told me they were shipping to dealers. They didn't tell me how many they were shipping to dealers. <laughs> That does not instill us with a lot of confidence. Yeah. Oh, because I, I, I really kind of want another 10 millimeter. Because I had, I've got the G20, and that was a replacement for the, when I got rid of the uh, uh, EAA Witness compact the steel compact but i would like another um hammer fired 10 millimeter i was kind of you know i've been kind of looking at like 1911s and 10 millimeter but i don't know the I well, I want another 1911 because I've got the Kimber, but it's an aluminum frame, and I kind of want a steel frame one. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Yeah, they're not giving them things away anymore. No, I, 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 I would like to get a Fusion 1911. When Wilson Combat was was bought by um, who bought him? The bought by when, whoever. When did somebody buy Wilson Combat? Was it Wilson Combat? Bill Wilson. I thought it was um, his. Uh, the guy that started Fusion was the president. And when they got bought out, he he started his own company and is doing uh, 1911s. I was thinking he was from... Uh, there's a good chance I'm all mixed up because that, that happens quite often. I get confused. Uh, fusion firearms. I thought they said on their website about us. Hello. So, Orges. This is the founders, Bob Serva. Dan Wilson, that's, yeah, it was Dan Wilson, sorry. He was president of Dan Wilson Firearms, and then when they were bought, he started Fusion Firearms. That's what it was. They're kind of a mid-range price, you know, like seven, eight hundred ish and up. But again, there's lots of stuff that I want. But... Oh, go away. There we go. Oh, here I can show everybody what I'm looking at here. 
the Fusion website. Oh, there we go. But, you know, they're 1911s. These are the expensive ones. Uh, let's look at their 10 millimeters. There you go. I don't know, I probably wouldn't get this one. I don't I don't like them feet on there. Yeah. Uh, here's a more affordable one. Oh, it looks nice, I think. So I was looking at when I when I bought the Kimber, I was looking at at the fusions and went for the two tone Kimber instead. But I don't know, looks nice. You can't really screw up a nineteen eleven, can you? Of course. How to spec? I mean, those were notorious for having to be hand fit and hadn't fitted and stuff. There's no real spec. Oh, Plus, they start making the internals out of meme or mim. Yeah. That's when I would be scared. I was worried about it. Uh, the Saint said the new CZ600 trial rifle bolt action is kind of cool. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, trail. Trial? Trail. CZ600 trail. Uh, here, I'll show what that one looks like here. You can use uh, AR magazines with it. So you can get it in 223 Remington, 762 by 39, and 300. Ack. Wonder what the magazine for 762 by 39 is all about. Is it an AK mag? I don't know. So uh, if I went over to when it says going back down again to the other things besides trail, they had like three other ones. Can you get that Lux in? Uh, Lux. Can you get that Lux in seven sixty by thirty nine? Oh, 
30 at 6, 308, 223, go. 300 wood mag. I don't know, uh, appearance wise, uh, it's not, to me, not an attractive gun. The trail. The trail? Yeah. You don't like chassis like that? No. It's all about carrying it, though. If you had to carry that up a hill to shoot a sheep or yeah. something. No, I understand. I understand. I just don't like the way it looks. <laughs> Uh, X Adam one. I'm thinking of looking at a T Sauce 2011. The price is right, and I think they make a 10 millimeter version. They have the Night Stalker double stack 1911. And Ozzy was looking for the Taurus TH10, but ended up finding the P320 X10. Uh, next item one T sauce D10 double stack 10 millimeter and Night Stalker. If you like slide cuts and threaded barrel, uh, the Saint brings up less bear. I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford a less bear. And John Brown Productions is out there. Good evening, or probably, probably good, good morning evening. for you. Uh, Mr. Bob De La Balina, any thoughts on Rock Island Arms FSHC 10 millimeter, 16 rounds on a double stack 1911? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? There's a rule I like Rock Island, but I don't know anything about that specific gun. Uh, let me look it up here. F S H C 10. All right, let's take a look at her here. Oh, it looks all right. I haven't, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about them. Hmm. So 16 rounds of 10 millimeter. That's pretty good. You'll be needs that many rounds. And MSRP is affordable, so the real life price should be a little better. Is the night strike still here, or do you leave? Uh, um, still here. Oh, you're underneath the thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know much about them, but well, it looks nice. And Rock Island has really kind of come into their own in the past few years. Oh, let me go see what... Are these made here now, or are these made to come in the Philippines still? I don't know. Or do they like make them in the Philippines and then finish them here? But I know they have facilities here now. I don't know what they do with them though. Mm. But they have ammo facilities and gun facilities in the US. It's, it's not me, that's the dog. Mm. What noise? <laughs> dog snoring.
Oh, yeah. I don't know, kind of everything I'm seeing says they're still made in the Philippines, but I don't know how, uh, how up to date that is. What is the uh, biggest puzzle you they, put together? How many pieces? Rock Island has a thing. In 2011, Arms Corps opened a brand new production facility in Stevensonville, Montana. Is that the uh, ammo or is that the guns? Uh, well, it says Arms Corps opened, so that, that might be the ammo. That's the ammo, I think. And then RIA USA, American made. It may look like a manufacturing facility, but it's actually a symbol of our commitment. Uh, let me expand this. And American made premium firearms. So they might be making some stuff here. Uh, so I, uh, I guess I'll show what I'm on. As I sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. And on that note, I'm jumping out. I'll see you guys later. Well, thanks for stopping by. Yep. Later. Everyone. See ya. Night. It looks like maybe at least these are made in the U.S. Because this is on their American Made page. Okay. Uh, so maybe not the 1911s, but they are making some stuff in the U.S. So let me see what uh, Ozzy sent me. Do do. Ah. Sent me a picture of his new holster pattern. That's for his uh, new holster pattern for the Sig P365. Oh, that's the snakeskin. He's he mentioned the other day that he got got some snakeskin to do a a holster. Cool. Yeah, definitely. When you finish that, Ozzy, uh, love to see pictures of it. Uh, well, anything else you guys want to talk about? I stopped drinking coffee about halfway through the day, so I'm kind of fighting, keeping going. I keep dozing. Oh. Uh, Try to uh, see if that keeps me going. The same as coffee. Cheaper than coffee. Yeah, you don't get the jitters as much. You just start poking them somewhere else. Does he ever get tired of being you poking him? Or does he just lay there? <laughs> nah. I get tired of him poking me. Whenever he's not sleeping.
Zombie's over here poking at me. Do your dogs sleep in the bed with you, or do they sleep on the floor? Oh, yeah. I'm regular. My dog sleep on me. Yeah. Well, it depends. If it's hot out, then they sleep wherever they feel like. When it's cold out, we all sleep in a big pile. My dog doesn't. He'll sleep in the bed with my wife, but he won't with me anymore. He used to, but he had a bad habit of when he'd jump off the bed, he would jump off me, and it would wake me up, and my reaction would be to throw him. I'm just, you know, waking up out of a dead sleep and then reacting. I throw him off so he doesn't he doesn't uh, sleep in the bed if it's just me anymore. He will sleep on the couch with me, but not not in bed. I like the idea of knowing when somebody's sneaking up on you in the middle of the night. Critters, no. Yes, well, the number of critters is better than, you know, because anybody can be asleep, but when you have more than one critter, you've got, uh, I don't know, the potential of one of them being half asleep or something to be awake enough to hear what's going on. Yeah. And there's yeah, some he's... number. I guess if you had three or four, then you start worrying about there's always somebody awake who's always worried about something, and then you never get any sleep. He's, he's pretty good about if there's... Um, if he hears any kind of funny noise, he'll... he'll He doesn't quite growl. It's kind of somewhere between a growl and kind of like a... Woof, uh, uh, and then if it gets louder or closer, then he'll, he'll he might bark a little bit. We had a used to have a beagle. That the reason I got a beagle was because you know, I was working nights, and so my wife would be home alone. I got a beagle to be a watchdog. So if there's to be noisy, if there's you know something going on that way. It alerts everybody, and he's being noisy to um, hopefully deter anything. And he was really good at being noisy. Um, I had uh, more than one person tell me that they used to re raise beagles, and my beagle was extra loud. Was was a good puppy. And he used to sleep in the bed, and for some reason, he'd like to. He would sleep behind me, but then would always stretch out his paws and end up scratching me in the back. And hmm. he, we got him, but he was really high strung. So anytime he got left alone, you know, he'd chew. He chew the corner of the wall tear up the carpet yeah beagles do that and so we got uh i got a cat to keep him company we went down went down to the shelter and when we we're looking looking at cats there was one cat that all the workers were complaining about making a mess and be in trouble so i took him and as soon as I brought him home, him and the beagle were basically best friends. You know, they'd sleep together, uh, hang out together, play together. Yeah. But they're the reason that we ended up, we went from, did we have a, I think we, we had a full size bed, but it was really crowded. And then when my wife was pregnant, we had to get a queen size. And I don't think we had the king at the old house. I think we switched to a king when we came to the new house. King size bed. But the cat would, 
If I was laying on my side, he liked to nestle up behind my knees. And if I was laying on my back, he would sleep in between my knees. And when he when he would sleep in between my knees, I could knock him around with my legs and he would just kind of roll around. But any other time he was a little more skittish. And he loved bread. I don't know why he, he loved bread. He would he would work together with the beagle. He would knock stuff off the counter so the beagle could eat it. And our beagle ate everything. You would find out what he ate after he pooped it out. Like my uh, ate one of my wife's bras, and we found it because he pooped out the bra strap. Um, yeah. It was a good dog, good cat, and then fortunately had to put them both down in the same week. The beagle had was just worn out. He, you know, he had old age and developed neurological problems where he couldn't walk straight. If he walked down the hallway, he would always end up walking into the wall because he couldn't keep a straight line. And he would wake up in pain. And that was that was a really tough decision where it's you know am i prolonging his suffering because you know for my sake and did some reading and online which kind of helped me make the decision that you know it was time and that was tough and then the same week the cat turned out the cat had stomach cancer and so we had to put him down that was that was a rough week Larry Knopf is out there. Uh, Sergeant Joe Smith said guard hamster. That was our first pet was a hamster. I got my wife a hamster and then ended up building, a, bought a bunch of the tubes and it had a big, you know, place it could run around. And X Adam one, my pup sleeps next to me. It's almost expected. She gets all the feedings, feelings when I tell her to sleep on the bed. She's too old to jump off the bed to go use the bathroom. She's almost 119 in dog years. Yeah, I've, I've talked about it before where when we got... Uh, or Jack Russell. Uh, there's a bunch of shelters that got together and were doing a function where you could come adopt pets. And I didn't want to go because I was not over losing the, the beagle. And so, you know, but I went up and my wife looked at different dogs and stuff. And I'm just kind of, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Sure. And then she picked out the dog we have now, and which was good. It because uh, Jack is a really good dog, and I'm happy happy that we got him. Uh, X Adam one's asking why doesn't Snoopy have any brown? Are there beagles with only black and white? Uh, you know, there's different colors. There's lemon beagles, which are kind of a tan. And then, the you know, your traditional beagles, coloring that everybody thinks of. I saw a post on Instagram where it's a beagle that's sitting up and you can see the shadow and the shadow looks just like Snoopy. Uh, Larry saying he's still picks up the dog now and again, has uh, got too old to jump on the bed. And X Adam was going to buy a step for her to use off the bed. I had bought one of those 
for our for the beagle uh, when he when he started getting older, but he would never use it. Can't remember if I got the steps or I got one of the ramps, but got something for the bed. Oh, uh, Gary. Yo. Uh, is there anything you'd like to plug? Well, maybe. Uh, let's see. Got some knife uh, knife shorts out. Um, got foul territory coming Friday night at 9 p.m. Central Time. So, um, that's pretty much it as far as major stuff on the channel. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. I appreciate you being here. And why don't I do... Ooh, this. Oh, G Webs. Is there anything you want to plug? You got anything coming up you want to talk about? Uh, I'm just happy I stayed awake this whole time. I'm crashing pretty hard. But thanks for hosting. Thanks for the invite. No, no problem. Oh, uh, so no overnight this weekend. It's an off. It's an off weekend. And so the next chat will be next Wednesday. And I don't think there's anything else. Oop. I want there we go. Uh appreciate everybody being here. Everyone in the live chat that was uh chatting her up. Appreciate it. If you were out there watching, didn't say anything, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, I appreciate you being here too. Now let me know that you're out there. If you watch this in replay once again, leave a comment. Uh, anything we talked about, uh, agree with, disagree with, uh, what's your favorite dog? And other than that, I hope every ha everybody has a good night and go do something good. Mm -hmm.